Hello and welcome to another World Cup edition of the Dream Team Professor podcast. We have just two games left of the World Cup, the final and the third place playoff. And in this episode, we're going to look at the top players to target from both of these fixtures. But first, we're going to just start with a quick recap of the semi-final games. So we'll start with Argentina 3, Croatia 0. Uh, Messi got the star man in this game. So one goal, one assist and 15 points. But this was a controversial one because Alvarez was quite close behind him with two goals and he got an 8.4 rating and Messi got an 8.5 rating. So very close and if you had Alvarez you'd been really disappointed because Alvarez got taken off before he could get that uh, third goal, the hat-trick. But I'll come on to it on the next slide why this is controversial so we'll, we'll hold that for later. This was Argentina's third clean sheet in six games and Emi Martinez got obviously the clean sheet points and a rating 7.6. Um, Tagliafico came in for Acuna who was suspended in this game and he was the only other defender to get a rating from this fixture. Um, I'd expect Acuna to come back in for the final as, although they did keep a clean sheet it seems like Molina and Acuna are probably the two favourites to start that game. And then the centre-back pairing of Otamendi and Romero will probably be likely to start again. Lissandro Martinez did come on as a sub, um, he got five points. Romero and Otamendi only finished with four because they both got yellow cards, but the yellow cards were reset after the quarter-final stages, so they're not at risk of being suspended. Paredes was a surprise inclusion in the midfield. Um, they had a slight shape change for this game. Um, I think they went with like a five at the back against Holland and played three centre-backs. Um, but they went to like a 4-4-2 in this game and they had Paredes in. Uh, McAllister and Enzo Fernandez were also still in there and the pool. But it was only Enzo Fernandez and Paredes that managed to get a rating from that midfield. From Croatia, it was quite disappointing. Um, lots of zeros and lots of minuses across the whole team. And no player scored any points in this game for them. So really disappointing. I thought they'd at least be able to keep it tight in this game. I didn't think they'd win. I thought Argentina would go through. But Croatia really didn't give a good account of themselves after conceding that early goal. So I'm a bit concerned how they might do in this third place playoff now because they've been quite solid throughout the tournament. But in this game, they really were quite shaky at the back. Then on to the other semi-final fixture, which was France 2 and Morocco 0. And the star man went to Theo Hernandez in this game, 18 points. And I had a shocker in one of my teams. Not this vlog team that you're going to see later, but one of my other teams that's in a mini league to... Uh, win some cash that I'm top of currently. Um, a lot of the people below me have got Theo Hernandez in their side and it was my plan initially to bring him in and basically block the move so that they couldn't make any gains on me. But I'd done the unthinkable and forgot to make the changes ahead of the time. Uh, in these other matches, I've kind of made my transfers ahead of time. But this one, I was waiting for the lineups. I got caught doing a lot of other stuff and didn't make him in time. So that's made that league very interesting. So I've got him in this team that I'm going to show a bit later. So I was pretty happy with the 18 points in this game, but I was pretty much watching behind the sofa for this mini league side because a lot of France defenders were in the opposition teams. But yeah, Theo Hernandez got the star man in this one. And we tipped him in the last video because he just looks like the most attacking defender from the bunch of this French team. So he got 18 points and an 8.2 rating. Upamecano was out and Rabio was out from the previous game and both are ill. Um, I read a tweet, I don't know how accurate it was, but I think they blamed the air conditioning and it's not the first time I've seen someone mention this throughout the tournament. So it seems like there's some sort of bug going around. I'm not sure whether or not they'll be um, playing in the final though because Konate started this game and he played really well. He got a rating of 7.6 and 8 in total. And I think Konate's been pretty good throughout the tournament really. So will be interesting to know if Upamecano starts or Konate for the final. Um, they had Varane as the other centre-back and Kunde as the right-back. Um, but Kunde got the rating and Varane was a 6.8, so just missed out. I thought Anton Griezmann was incredible in this game and he has been throughout the tournament. I, I hadn't really seen him play in this slightly deeper role, but he's really playing well as that sort of um, centre-attack midfield role, and he's really putting a defensive shift in as well. So only three points in this and a 7.7 .7 rating, but don't really reflect. think it reflects how well he's actually been playing this tournament. So I've been really impressed with him. Um, solid scores all around, really, for the whole French team. Um, nothing major other than Hernandez. No one got into double figures, but pretty much, well, every player in the in the team that got on scored points apart from Turam. 
Um, but a lot of frees throughout. You had Dembele, who's popular. He's on the free. Giroud got a free. Griezmann and Mbappe finished with a free, a 7.2 rating. Uh, Mouani scored the goal. He came on as a sub and got five points and a 6.9 rating. So he missed out there, but I can't imagine many people had him in their team. One other thing that I noticed was Olivier Giroud was subbed off fairly early in the second half. Um, but I don't think it was an injury concern. It looked mostly like it was either being rested or it was tactical. Um, they moved Mbappe up front. Similar to the Croatia game, there wasn't many points to go for Morocco in this. Um, a lot of minus ones and a lot of zeros. But to be honest, I don't think that really shows a, a true reflection of the game because Morocco was seriously good in this game. They were unlucky. They, they put um, France in some tricky situations throughout the game and they were really quite attacking. It's probably one of the first games that I've seen Morocco playing on the front foot. It actually looked like France that were playing on the, on the counter-attack, but a good showing from them. Um, and I think Morocco have come out of this semi-final looking quite good and Croatia have come out of it looking a bit shaky. So it's going to be an interesting um, third place playoff because I would have favoured Croatia initially, but Morocco look, looked pretty good and Croatia looked terrible. So it's going to be an interesting third place playoff. So moving on to the players to target from that third place playoff and the final of the World Cup. And I'm going to start with Argentina. Um, and I just wanted to start with the bit I mentioned in the last bit about Messi and Alvarez. It being unlucky that Alvarez didn't get the Star Man Award. And the reason I've seen this is because if you look here, I've got in the top right corner, I've got the who scored um, ratings for the game. And then below it, I've just got how they rated it on Sun Dream Team. And obviously these two are supposed to work hand in hand. So the, the who scored rating powers the um, star man ratings and the ratings on the Sun Dream Team game. And now who scored here in this? I've got Alvarez at 8.5 rating and Messi at 8.4. Then Sun Dream Team have got Messi at 8.5 and Alvarez at 8.4. So the other way round. So actually technically... Alvarez should have got the Star Man Award, so you could feel a little bit hard done by if you had Alvarez in your team. Um, he should really have got Star Man and got the points for it, so you'd be a little bit disappointed in that. But I've got Messi, so I'm not going to complain. I've not got Alvarez, but I'd feel a little bit hard done by, to be honest with that. The only thing that sometimes does happen is that Sun Dream Team locks in these ratings from who scored and who scored sometimes do go back and change them a little bit later but there's probably no chance that these sun dream team ratings get changed at this point so back on to the previews for the final argentina um looking at the defense france have scored six goals in their last three games so i think it's going to be quite tough for argentina to keep france away from scoring um but if you are going to go for the defenders which i've got a few in my team um, I'd probably say Molina and Acuna are probably the best options at fullback. They're 3.5 million. I've got Otamendi in my team at 4 million. And just because he's less of a rotation risk, he's played every game, he's been pretty solid. Um, and obviously, he's got that threat from corners. But to be honest, I do think Molina at 3.5 and Acuna at 3.5 probably have the biggest threat when it comes to goals or assists. As you can see from this Who Scored rating, um, Tagliafico got the, the best rating from this previous game against Croatia, which it would be quite unlucky for him not to play this game, but I do think Acuna's now cemented himself as the first uh, first on the team sheet at left back. Then on to Messi at 7.5, and he has to be on this list each time. He's got five goals, three assists, and of the six games that he's played, he's had four star man awards and a rating in all six of them. So. Yeah, who scored machine, uh, rating machine, but it's, it doesn't seem like it's one of those um, controversial ones that you get from who scored. He's legitimately been, maybe apart from this Alvarez situation, but he's legitimately been one of the best players on the pitch each game for Argentina, and he's carried them far throughout this tournament. But then on to Alvarez at 4 million. He's not someone that I've considered really very much throughout the whole of this World Cup, but he's got four goals, one assist, and now he's got 4.7 average points, so he's been really impressive. And it'll be interesting to see whether they play this sort of 4-4-2 formation um, or they go back to having sort of three up front with Alvarez, Messi and Di Maria like they did in some of the previous games. I think they might go a little bit more defensive playing France, but interesting to see. And the other two players that I'll mention from this lineup, I'd probably look at McAllister or Fernandez if I'm really limited for budget because they're both 2.5 million and they've both got a few attacking returns throughout the tournament so far. But 
yeah, on more on the budget side. And at this point, when you're making transfers, you've probably got a lot of players eliminated and you can probably afford some more expensive players. So I'd only bring these in if you really are screwed for budget. Then moving on to France. So again, Theo Hernandez at left back. He, he got the star man. He got a goal in this game and he's had quite a few attacking returns throughout the tournament as well. So he's probably the best option from this defence at four million. Um, I'd probably expect it to stay the same as this actually. So Hernandez, Konate, Varane and Kunde at the back. But probably Hernandez, I think he's probably the best pick. Just because, quite honestly, looking at this game, I think there's going to be goals in it. And I don't think I'd want to bank on the clean sheet points. But if you can get an assist or even a goal from someone like Hernandez, then that makes it worthwhile bringing someone like that in. I was picking someone other than Hernandez. I'd probably at this point look for Varane or Kunde just because they're probably more nailed. I think Kanate, he's the most at risk of being rotated back out for Upamakano if he does come back in. But it's it's gonna be it's gonna be flip of a coin really. But I think they would go with Konate after that strong performance in the last game. Konate's three point five and Upper Meccano's three point five. So you're not gonna be tied up for budget if you swap between the two. In terms of midfielders for France, I don't think there's that many to target. They've got a lot of defensive midfielders in this team. I think Dembele at three point five million is the only one that is more attacking. Um, and he's probably the best uh, value pick from the midfield. But he hasn't actually delivered that many attacking returns so far. But he plays on that right wing, so he's going to get in those dangerous positions. But then moving on to the attacking positions, this is where there's a lot of choice from France. And I think all of them are quite good options. But we'll start with Mbappe. And I think at this point in the tournament, Mbappe and Messi are the only two real premiums left in the game. So if you can get both of them in your team, I would. Mbappe got a 7.2 in that last game. Um, but... Yeah, he's, he's got five goals, two assists so far, and it's going to be him and Messi battling it out for the golden boot, I think. You have got Giroud, who's in, on four goals, and you've got Alvarez on four goals, but it looks like it's going to be between Mbappe and Messi on the final day. If you do go for Messi and Mbappe, then the other choice to make is that third slot. Do you go with Griezmann or do you go with Olivier Giroud? I think it's quite a close one. You've got Griezmann 5.5. Um, he's been brilliant throughout the tournament, but I do think that he's... He's been better in terms of all-round play, but it hasn't always reflected in his points. Um, he has got two Star Man awards and three assists, but he's got no goals so far. Whereas Giroud's 3.5 million um, is two points better off in total than um, Griezmann so far in the tournament. But I feel like Giroud's more of a big game player and he's got more um, goal threat than Griezmann has at this moment. Griezmann's playing a little bit deeper than what I used to remember him playing. Um, Giroud's on four goals as well at the minute. So yeah, he's, he's going to be looking to get that golden boot as well, even though Mbappe and Messi are a lot closer. But I think Giroud's just got more attacking threat. And in my opinion, if I was going to go Mbappe and Messi and then choose one out of Griezmann and Giroud, I'd be going for Giroud. And then on to Morocco. And like I said, I think Morocco deserved a bit more from that game than what they got. They were on the front foot for most of the game and they had a few chances to um, to really hurt France. And they had a goal line clearance, which I think Kunde cleared one off the line right at the end. Um, but they were really entertaining to watch. So I felt a bit disappointed for them. But now they're eliminated um, and it's this third place playoff. There's, although it is a third place playoff, I, I don't really feel like there's that much on the line it's not like they're going to be eliminated so I'd quite like to see them take the handbrake off in this game and really go at Croatia I think they can hurt them so it's going to be a tough game for them Croatia are a solid side but going into this third place playoff I think Morocco definitely have the upper hand over Croatia who might feel a little bit um a little bit shaky after that performance against France so if I was going to choose some players from Morocco, I do think the France-Argentina game is the obvious one to target. But in this third place playoff, if you really are trying to catch up on uh, people above you and choose some differentials, I think Siri up front at 2 million, he's got 21 points and two goals so far. He was pretty dangerous. Um, then Hakim Ziyech, I thought looked brilliant. Um, these last couple of games, he's been really good, actually. Completely unrecognisable to the Ziyech that we see from Chelsea. He just doesn't really have any confidence when he's playing for Chelsea at the minute. Um, he's not really in favour at all. But in this Morocco side, he's the talisman. Um, so he's 3 million. He's got 18 points, one goal and one assist so far. 
But in the France game, he was taking all the corners, set pieces, and he looked really dangerous. So I think he could be a good option. And on to Hakimi, who I think's probably been their best player of the tournament so far. Really, really impressive. At 3 million, um, he's a top point scorer with 33 points. And he's got one assist in terms of attacking returns. But he's looked quite dangerous throughout. So I have seen him take the odd free kick, but it does look like Ziyech is on most of the set pieces. If you were fancying the Morocco clean sheet, which they have been really solid, really, apart from that France game, um, do bear in mind that Sace got injured during that last game and he looked like he was really struggling. And then you've got Aguerd who plays for West Ham. He got injured in the warm-up, so didn't play any part in this game. So I'd imagine it would be quite a much changed backline for Morocco. So it could be an avoid in terms of defence. Then we move on to Croatia, who... I would probably have been favouring before um, the semi-finals took place that if they did get through to the third place playoff with Morocco, I probably would have said they were favourites. But after that last game against France, uh, I have got a few question marks, but I am quite invested in this Croatia team now. There was a few mini leagues that I'm in where I had fallen behind and I did want to go the differential route. So I did go a full Croatia backline in some teams. Not this vlog team, but some of the other teams that I have. Um, but obviously that really didn't pay off against Argentina, so disappointing there. But yeah, they were usually quite solid throughout the tournament, but Messi and Alvarez were just on the top of their game in that game, and they caused them problems all game long. If you are back in the clean sheet for Croatia in this game, I'd probably say Sosa at 2.5 is the best option at left back. He's probably been their most attacking defender so far. I think Lovren had the most in terms of points, but I think Sosa was probably the best in terms of attacking returns and attacking threat. So he's a good one to target. But the only thing is he missed the game a few games back now through illness. And since then, he does seem to be getting substituted a lot. So that is maybe one thing to consider. And then Gravadio, Lovren, Juranovic, I don't think there's much in between them. And then you've got uh, Livakovic in goal. He's been the hero in some of these penalty shootouts, but... I'm not sure whether or not I think this third place playoff game will go to a penalty shootout, but he has been quite good for them. Have Luka Modric at 4.5 million. He is, he is their penalty taker and their main set piece taker, and he has been really good throughout the tournament. But in terms of Sun Dream Team points, he's been crap. He's got five points so far throughout the tournament, so a really poor return. But I have backed him in a couple of my teams just because of that set piece threat and penalty threat. Whether or not he starts, whether or not there's some rotation, I'm not sure. But I do think they'll probably keep a fairly strong side for this third place playoff. They might make a few changes up front, potentially. Um, they brought on that um, Meyer, I think it is. On the, you can see him on the bench there, number seven. He came on at the end of that Argentina game. And I did just get a hunch that maybe they might mix up that front line a little bit. But Perisic at 4 mil, he's been quite an engine throughout this tournament. He doesn't seem to get subbed that much. Uh, whether or not he gets given a rest, I'm not sure. But he's got one goal and two assists so far this tournament. And I think he probably will start. So he could be a good option if you're looking for a goal from Morocco against that possibly rotated Moroccan backline. Or Cramerich at 3.5. He'd be a massive punt up front. And you'd obviously want to check the lineups first. But he has got two goals for them so far this tournament. So then here is my vlog team update. Um, it has actually caught up what was my best team. But I don't feel like I can count it because what was my best team was the team that I forgot to make a lot of changes in, which was going to be bringing in Hernandez for 18 points. So my top team technically would have been clear, but I made the schoolboy error of not making my transfers early and not checking the lineups. So egg on my face, but... This vlog team, um, it's up to 332 points now in total, which is 4.3k overall. Um, I've got 27 points from the Argentina game and 27 points from the France game. So it was Martinez, Otamendi, Hernandez, who got the massive 18 points. I had three points for Dembele, uh, Modric blanked. I've got the uh, big point score from Messi and then Giroud and Mbappe both got me three points. So 27 from that Argentina game and 27 from that France game was quite a big jump really, quite a good return. The two transfers that I said I was going to make and then forgot to make in this team were Danilo and Guerrero out for Hakimi and Kunde. Um, so I did miss out on the five points that Kunde got. I think it was either five points or eight points. Um, so I did miss out a little bit there, so my fault there. 
but it does mean I have two transfers remaining to make um, in these last few fixtures. So if I go through my team now, I've got Martinez in goal, who will be playing in the final. Danilo's eliminated. I've got Otamendi, Hernandez, and then Guerrero, who's eliminated. Dembele, Modric, Asensio's eliminated. Messi, Giroud, and Mbappe. So the players that I, I can replace um, or choose to replace, I've got Danilo, Guerrero, and Asensio here. So I've got two transfers left. My front three, I'm not going to change. Messi, Giroud and Mbappe, I quite like that front three. In midfield, Dembele and Modric are solid. And then in defence, I've got two Argentinians with Martinez in goal and Otamendi and Hernandez. So the choice would either be to bring in, take Danilo and Guerrero out for either Argentina or France defenders. But I just don't see a clean sheet. Well, I think it's a flip of a coin, really. Who's going to get the clean sheet here? I don't think either of them have been extremely solid. So, these are going to be my last two moves. So, I'm deciding to go attacking with it and try and get some attacking returns. So, I'm going to take out Guerrero and Asensio for Hakim Ziyech and Perisic of Croatia. So, Ziyech, obviously, from Morocco as well. 3 million and 4 million for Guerrero and Asensio. I just think from this third place playoff, I think now that they're both eliminated, these two teams have got nothing to lose. Their support has been good throughout the tournament. And I think they should just, this is my my thinking, but I just think it'd be nice for both teams to stop being so solid and defensively secure and just go for the win and be a bit more attacking. So Ziyech and Perisic are probably two of the bigger goal threats from both of these teams. I think either of these two could get on the score sheet as long as they do start and as long as I do remember to make my transfers, that would help. But I think in this um, in this game that both teams could score. So I'm going to go Ziyech and Perisic unless they're not starting. I'm not liking the idea of bringing in either an Argentina or France defender just because I have a feeling that both teams are going to score in this game. And if I had to make had to make a prediction from either the third place playoff and the final. I think that Argentina are going to win the World Cup and Croatia are going to go on to win this third place playoff. So that is my prediction for both of those games. But that is it for this episode and probably the last episode of the World Cup edition of the podcast. So thank you for everyone that's watched throughout the World Cup and please do subscribe for more Sun Dream Team content. We'll be back for the normal Premier League season and the normal Dream Team version of the game. So yeah, please do subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify, please do follow us on there as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the normal Dream Team game.